Hey guys, it's Jim Bounds with Motorhome Rehab Ranch over on Patreon. Ranch hands, good to see you. This is going to be episode three of pulling a motor. Actually, not pulling a motor. The motor's already out. All right. We're now going to tear down the motor. We're going to take it apart. Right? Now, you review back from episode two. You uh, you have the motor on the ground. And it's reasonably clean because you uh, put some uh, Dow uh, oven cleaner on it. Well, what I want you to do now, it's going to be on a stand now, right? You should get it on a stand. You can't work on it sitting on a table or something. Get a motor stand. Some that's got plenty of them. Douse it again. Get the, now another thing, a Dow oven cleaner, and just because the cleaner you can get it, the cleaner is going to keep you. Okay. <clears throat> so clean that thing up one more time. All right. Now, got it cleaned off, blown off, whatever. Let's go to the front. Now, wonderful thing now we have, we have cameras. We have digital cameras. Take pictures. Take pictures of everything. Back 20 years ago, we didn't have cameras. We didn't have the chance to do that. Go to the front of that thing and take pictures. Because what you're going to do now is you're going to pull off all those brackets. And you're going to go to put that back on and say, what's that bracket? Where are those bolts at? No, no, no. As you pull it off, get plastic bags and say, this is the alternator bracket. Get a picture of it before you take it apart. Say, well, that's, that's cheating. No, it's not. It's knowing what the bolts are. <laughs> okay. So uh, take the front off. Take all your brackets off. Take the water pump off. Okay. Now you're going to get to the timing chain cover. By the way, uh, I, I know that we don't have any graphics here or anything, but this is very important. I want you to hear this. This is important information. And if you have questions, this is to get you in the lake. If you have questions, call me. This is to tell you what you're going to do. That doesn't mean you all got it and you're going to take off. So call me. This is why I'm here. All right. All right. So you got the timing cover off. <clears throat> There's your chain. Now, I know your chain's going to be loose if it's an older motor. How do I know that? Because mine's loose right now. Engine runs great. Sit there at idle. I hear a dink, dink, dink. The timing chain is slapping on the side of the block. It's so loose. And I know it. And it still runs good. I can't go out and drive my motor home. JG can't go anywhere until I get my timing chain fixed. This is very, very important, okay? Now, when we go to put it back together, I'll tell you all the parts and everything to get. But right now, what we're trying to do is we're trying to take it apart, and we're trying to get it all the pieces to take it to your machinist. Because if you pay the machinist to do all this, it's going to be really expensive. But not just that, it's going to get him irritated. He likes to be a machinist. He doesn't like to clean stuff. So do him a favor. Do yourself a favor. Clean it up. Get all the parts off. Categorize the parts. He doesn't need any of the brackets or any of those bolts. Only thing he's going to need, and I'll tell you when we get there, it's going to be the head bolts, uh, the, uh, uh, when we pull the crank, uh, the crank out, crank bolts, the main bolts of the long block inside the motor. Doesn't need any of the stuff on the outside. So you label all that stuff and put it away. All right. So the front end's down to the block now, right? All right. We're going to go after the heads. <clears throat> We're going to pull the heads off. Valve covers come off. Put them aside. Now, when you look at the valve covers, we're going to, we're going to do a forensic. Okay, we're going to see what problems that the coach, that the engine had. And we're going to try to fix them as we take it apart. A few of them. Like right now, if you pull the valve covers off, you're going to see where each one of those bolts, the metal's dented just a little bit. Because the bolt held it down and it squished the gasket and in between it was a little higher. Okay. So you take the valve covers and you flatten off the plates where the bolts go through. You'll see it. It'll be mushroomed out. So you flatten those off, put them to the side so you don't forget doing that. Put both valve covers off. Now, the heads. <clears throat> if you have a 455 head... Uh, you will have on number one port, number one exhaust port on the head, you'll have a J. A J, or you might have a G. Now, these heads are smogger heads. They're low compression heads. 
The hot rodders don't like these that much because to do enough machine work to make it have high compression is very expensive. So they'd rather have an A, B, or a C head. The J heads are what we want because one, we want low compression. Two, we don't want to have the flow, the high flow. We want to have little nubbies inside the intake manifold. We don't want to, we don't want to uh, have a scavenge effect going on. We don't want to uh, uh, port and polish. Now, if it was a high RPM engine, you wanted to get the gas as fast as you could from the carburetor, the funnel, to the valve or to the, the cylinder. You'd want to have a real fast flow. Well, we don't want that, okay? We want something different. Now, this is a performance engine, but it's in a different direction of performance, okay? All right, <clears throat> so we're going we're gonna to pull the heads off. Got the valve covers off. We're going to take the intake manifold off next because that's between the two heads. Now, our intake manifold is a concave intake manifold, and if you look real careful where the carburetor bolts down, there's a, there's a plate right in the middle, a real thin plate, and there'll be a crack there. Reason for that is... This intake is the only intake GM ever made that is concave. In other words, the carburetor is actually below the plenum of the head, the top of the head. They did that so the carburetor would clear a Tornado uh, hood, because it's a big motor, and they use the same numbers on the GMC. So the intake manifold goes down. Okay. When you bend heat, it gets hot. So right in the middle of that intake manifold is hotter than a firecracker. This was a, not a flaw, it was a unique thing of this intake that over 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, differential heat. The front and the back is cool, the middle is hot as a firecracker, it cracks. Now, if you have that crack, you probably do, not if, you'll see it. That doesn't mean you need a new intake. Because you don't want to put a doghouse, you know, square box. You need that concave intake to have a flat floor. And you can use that intake if that's the only crack. So you want to clean it up, get the intake off, clean it up. You'll be surprised down in the valley, all I call them uh, Keeblers. It's carbon cookies. Over the years, all that heat has built up in there and cooked the oil. And right underneath that intake, you're going to see a pile of carbon. Okay. Pull the intake off, clean it up real good, make sure that's the only crack you see. If it is, when we put it back in, we'll be able to use it 100%. No problem. You don't have to go buy an Edelbrock Performer. By the way, I think the Edelbrock Performers are uh, on back order right now. But you don't need to do that. And you don't need to build a doghouse unless you really want to. Okay. Put the intake to the side. <clears throat> and we're back to the heads. <clears throat> Got head bolts. Pull the head bolts out, keep the head bolts. I would keep them in the same order that they came out, personally. I would number them. Um, you may want to put in new AR, ARP head bolts. Uh, they're not that much more expensive, maybe about 100 bucks, 120 bucks. Those head bolts are really important. And if you're going to reuse the head bolts, I'd put them in the same hole. <clears throat> All right, so you put those away, label them, and you pull the head off. Now, that's about as far as you want to go with the head because the machinist is going to deal with the valve train and we're going to change the valve train. He's going to do the valve job. We're going to put in new, he's going to put in new seats in it and all that. You just want to have that big piece of meat there cleaned up as good as you can to take it to him. So you'll have two of those big pieces of meat sitting on, sitting on the ground. All right, by this time, you probably got a couple of cuts and stuff in your hands. It's all right. Just take your time. You're not hurry. Just, it's all right. Remember, this is the first time you did this. <clears throat> well, if it's been the second or third time, you probably have less cuts. But the first time, I'm telling you, you're going to get cut up. And big, heavy parts, you know, and you bump up against something. If you take blood thinners like I do, you hit the side of that block, it'll cut you open. Be careful. All right. So the heads are off. <clears throat> what do we have left? We have what's called the short block. Short block is the block itself and all the stuff inside of it, okay? I'm gonna to try to get this all in one video, so this will be a long one, so, um, you know, uh, get some popcorn or something. <clears throat> on your jack stand, on your uh, motor stand, flip it over. Make the oil pan up now. 
take the oil pan off. You get that oil pan off, underneath there is the crank, the main bearings, the rod bearings, the caps. There's the oil pump under there. Okay. Um, <clears throat> look at the bottom of the oil pan. Uh, how much metal's in there? How much junk is in the bottom of the oil pan? Uh, I've seen some engines, there's literally chunks down there. Uh, it's not a big deal uh, unless you see some really big pieces. But that can give you the condition of the engine, the rings and all that kind of stuff over the years of worn down. That's okay. It's all right. As long as it wasn't blocked up or anything like that. All right. <clears throat> so sometimes a machinist, you want to ask them if they say they would like to take the motor just like it is right then, that's fine. Ask them. If they say, no, go ahead and break it down. All right. That's fine. But when you pull off the main bearing caps, you want to put them in the same order, the same bolts back on it. So in other words, you pull the main bearing caps up, you pull the uh, uh, piston rods, take the caps off the rods, pull the crank out. Put the, rod, put the caps back on the block and put the bolts in them. Because now we are going to line bore it. But it's important to have the caps in the same place because they've warped to the same same shape over the last 50 years and all the heat cycles and all that. Pistons, you want to know which piston is which. One, three, five, seven on the left side, two, four, six, eight on the right side. Number the pistons, pull them out, <clears throat> keep keep the uh, the bearings because you can read the bearings. Machine is going to want to read the bearings because he's going to look at the crank. Uh, he's probably going to want to turn the crank, but he wants to look at the crank and see how much wear is on the crank. That's going to kind of determine how far he's going to cut it down. So when you pull the pistons out, <clears throat> you'll have the rod connected. Put the cap back on it and number that piston and put the bolts back on it. So you'll have a box with eight pistons sticking up. <clears throat> All right. Now, you'd already pull off the oil pump. There's two bolts holding the oil pump on. Of course, that would come first. Sorry. Keep that oil pump. Because you're going to want to relieve on the new oil pump, you're going to want to do a little Dremel work and you want to keep that old oil pump. So just put it to the side. All right. And uh, uh, you can keep the pickup tube that goes with it. Just keep it with it. We're not going to use that pickup tube. Now, the oil pan is real important. Be sure there's no big dings in it because the bottom of that oil pan is, man, like four microns or something from that crank. When that when the weight of that crank comes around, it's very, very close to the oil pan. Matter of fact, if somebody tried to jack the engine up on the oil pan, they get finished and they hear a little ticking sound, that'd be the crank hitting the oil pan. It's that close. So don't, don't, don't set it on the oil pan. Very, very important. Don't do that. <clears throat> All right, so where we're at now, the motor sounds like it's pretty much apart. You got a big block there. You got a box of pistons with rods on them. Right, you got all the uh, the main bearing caps back on the block. All right, uh, you got a set of heads sitting there. You've got all the bolts that went in it. Right, that's the parts. Those are the parts that you want to take to your machinist. Now, next episode we'll talk a little bit about what you're going to talk to the machinist about. Now that information, you know, you go to a race team. And they say, yeah, we've got our special custom engine. We can't tell you what's in it. It's our special custom thing. Well, <clears throat> the next episode, we're going to start talking about what our engine, the, uh, uh, the co-op Kova motor, and our cam specifications, and how all that relates together. And uh, we're going to get into some pretty deep stuff here. Right? So we need to get this thing now down to the machinist. Call him up, get a time to go down there, and uh, give it a week or so. We'll get you another episode out, and we'll, I'll tell you what to talk to him about. Right? Well, look, <clears throat> in the future, you say, well, right now, I'm watching these all these episodes about this motor. I don't really need it. My motor's running great. Yeah, it's good to watch this. Eh, you may want to hang on and know where these videos are, because uh, your motor may take take a dump. I mean, you got to think about it. It is a 50-year-old motor. Maybe it's been rebuilt once or maybe twice. My in my coach, JG, is a 73, and it is an unbuilt motor. It's an original motor. Timing chain's loose. 
I got good compression. What should I do? Uh, maybe pull it. <clears throat> All right, so at this point, you're pretty deep because your, your motor home now is a hot dog sitting on tour stands that uh, if you can plug it in, you can live in it, but watch that first step, right? It's gonna be tall. Now, you say, well, how long is it gonna take? Is it gonna be next week, two weeks? Listen, the faster it gets done, the more worry I would have, all right? When we were building engines, it took 90 days for the machines to get all the stuff done. You go, oh my God. The only difference in it taking too much time and enough time is your plan. You made the plan too tight. Don't plan it. Give it time to really ferment. Get it time to, to give him time, get his machines to do his best. Because right? that's important. You can't rush into stuff. You want to do it one time. Right? Look, I hope this helps you. Um, I hope that uh, that. Uh, it was worth your time to sit here and watch me babble. And, you know, if, you, if you're tired of watching me, just close your eyes and, 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 and call it a podcast. Yeah, just do that. We'll have some more. We'll, we'll, we'll have more pictures and things as we get better with this, uh, with uh, uh, iPhones and, and these uh, uh, iPads and all this stuff. Right now, uh, I appreciate uh, one of the uh, one of ranch hands got me some lights. Hey, you can see me, can't you? Great, thanks. Thank you so much. Got me a new microphone, microphone here, and I got two of them. So when you come over and you want to talk to me, you can sit over here and talk, and they hear you too. You know? So look, <clears throat> again, thanks for the time. And uh, we'll see you on episode four, and we'll talk about what we're going to take it down to the machinist. All right. See you next time.